A uh, guy waving. I actually haven't seen them in Durara, but I know that we didn't get to do it, and I was disappointed. I'll be honest, I was disappointed. It wasn't the same, was it? <laughs> but I hear that that show's really popular and fun, so at least, at least there's that. And I shouldn't really be surprised, because the state of the industry as it is, dubbing companies don't really have a lot of money to just go and get these, you know, two of us to do some cameo roles uh, in a show. So it's not very surprising. And I don't know that this is true, so don't quote me, but I feel that I don't know how friendly some companies are with other companies to try and like work together and say hey could you record this in Texas and then send it to us I don't that that just wouldn't fly so Funimation will do that to other folks for example some people um, like Kyle Abair you guys know Kyle uh, yeah, who doesn't right he's freaking in everything um, he he's an alchemist and he plays Fallman but in, in in Brotherhood, he kind of comes and goes, and he randomly would appear and say two sentences, and then 12 episodes later, there he is again. Well, he lives in Los Angeles now, so we're not gonna, he's not going to fly out to record two lines. So he did all his stuff um, in Los Angeles at somebody's studio, I don't know whose, and sent it back to us, and that was okay. But um, I guess they're just, they, whoever did it, doesn't know me or Michael Tatum, so we didn't get to do it. Tear. Or on person in the back. What's up? Any show, any actor, what's your favorite role? Any show, any actor, what's your dream role? No, your favorite, your favorite screwed up line, your favorite movie. Oh, sorry, I hadn't been hearing drums, so I just, I just made up my own question. Uh, any show, any actor, what's my favorite, like, blooper? Yeah. Um, it's recorded, actually. It's in the Oron outtakes. On... <laughs> The second, the second set of them, so whatever it's on disc four, I guess, and it's of Travis as as uh, Mori Senpai. And what's funny about Travis and the fact that he's cast as Mori is that he's a lot like him in real life. He's not all quiet and stuff, but he's this big hulking guy who really likes small things that are cute. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Um, yes, <laughs> I don't know that he's a brony. <laughs> I'd have to ask him next time I see him. But, like, he likes kittens and things. When he sees something adorable, he turns into... <laughs> and, uh, so, there's in the Karuizawa episodes where Honey dresses like an old man and tries to sell ice cream and then Mori comes in and like strong arms, so clotheslines him to get him out of the way. This was the funniest thing to Travis and it's recorded. Like take after take, he could not get over like the visual, visual thing. Um, and he would just keep laughing because he thinks that it was so A, funny and B, cute. Uh, like Lucy doing honey, doing an old man selling ice cream. And it took us like five minutes to get him to say like, two sentences. Uh, that's definitely one of my favorite, favorite outtakes. Here with a picture. <laughs> oh, it's Yale Phantom Hive. Yes. Has, okay, how fun. Um, yeah, recording the, the Sun, the Sea, and the Host Club. That was a fun episode, particularly that, that scene, uh, for sure. But I think what I, I loved more than recording it as Haruhi was recording Michael as Kyoya because I knew what was going to happen. I'd seen the episode. I'd known for a long time what was coming. And Michael had no idea. He had no clue. He was kind of like, oh, th this is interesting. He doesn't have a shirt on. Okay. And so we're watching it in Japanese, and he's like, oh, oh. What? Okay. And he was, he was really excited about it because it was showing him this other aspect of Kyoya's character that he was not aware existed at the time. Uh, and I had already recorded, so my voice was already in there as he got to add his to it. And it was... It's one of those magical moments, and there are so many, especially about Oron, to just watch the thing come to life 
uh, in English, and it, and it was awesome. I really loved it. I loved it. And then, <clears throat> uh, Curious Empire. Um, so I've been thinking, uh, what, what, um, okay, I'll just have to come out with it. I think I love you. Do you want to go make out? Mm, my dad's not home. <laughs> okay. <laughs> that was really random. Uh, a guy in black sweatshirt. Yes. My first job is to cast the show, so I have to like put together a little audition side with a picture and a description of the character and some of their lines, listen to everybody, and pick the people. Uh, I also have to schedule them. Someone has gone through and counted up all the lines, and I know how many you should be able to record in an hour. So I do a bunch of math and go, okay, I need Vic for 10 hours and Todd for 4 hours, Travis for 3 hours. Send all that off. Uh, and then it's my job to know the entire show, top to bottom, front to back, every episode, and what I want it to sound like before I hear anybody say anything, because they record one person at a time. Uh, also, we're having a directing panel tomorrow, so we'll talk about it even more, but uh, then they record one line at a time, and I have to be able to tell them, no, no, emphasize this word, not that one, because I know what the other actors are going to sound like around them. Once everything's recorded, I listen through it again, I decide I don't like that, let's record it again, call them back in, I don't like that, blah, blah, blah. Uh, move the line to the left or the right, digitally stretch this, mess with that. Uh, rewrite, I have to be able to rewrite on the fly, because sometimes what the writer sees and what I see and what happens in the booth don't, are not the same. So I need to be able to very, very quickly look at words and know how to make a change this two-syllable word for a four-syllable one, uh, etc. Um, that's my job, very quickly in a nutshell. <laughs> um, right here with the camera and a, and a book. Do I what -y? Okay, so yes, I'm totally an Ed Winry. I'm pro Ed Winry. Yeah. Now, I did not used to be. At the end of the first Alchemist, I was like Winry Havoc all the way because he needs a woman. But um, <laughs> and because Ed's a jerk and he left Winry. But um, after in Brotherhood, then I'm absolutely an Ed Winry fan, and um, so I can say this for you. It's the easiest Winry line. Everybody can do it. Here we go. Wow. I've been sick. That wasn't a very good one. Sorry, guys. Uh, bleach hat. Oh, all the time. That happens all the time. Um, I think that every single girl at Funimation wanted to be Juliet in Romeo x Juliet. Everybody. Because I'm too old to play her on stage now. It's just kind of how it is. I mean, maybe I could. But, uh, so this was like our chance, right? <laughs> but only one person could do it. But Brina did a, did a great job. It happens all the time. There's always some part that you think that you want. But how can we really know? Because at an audition, we get a picture and some words. And you go, well, that person sounds like the most interesting. But sometimes the main characters, they're, they could be the same, you know, from one episode to another. They have the same kind of arc. But it's usually the supporting characters, the, I, the Mirias and the Isaacs, uh, the, the, the Yakamos, that are really lasting. You know? So I, didn't, I don't remember who I wanted to be in, in School Rumble, but I'm glad that, that I was Yakamo. Uh, with the Oron Bunny, Usachan. What's that? Cake. Cake! Not a pie fan. Uh, red Jacket. Correct. There was no re-auditioning for those of us uh, who were able to stick around. The only auditions we had to have were to find a new owl, because Aaron's voice had changed drastically. Um, and uh, some other folks that had like moved out of the area and weren't really voice acting a lot anymore, so to try and get them back, like uh, Josh Berry used to be, who's the red-haired, Breda? 
uh, but he lived in New Mexico and wasn't really an option, so, you know, we need to recast him. Bye! Uh, Damien Clark, who's the original Scar, and he's also Cell in Dragon Ball Z. Uh, he's a big-time, working-all-the-time Hollywood screen actor, so we needed a new Scar, so we got Tatum, and he did an awesome, awesome job. But if I already had the role, it was mine. Yeah. Um, back here with the black hat. This is my last one. Make it good. What other video games have you voice acted in? What are the... Oh, what are the video games that you voice acted in? Oh, uh, video games that I've done. Uh, I mentioned Street Fighter 4. I played Cammy. Um, I've been in Final Fantasy, the Crystal Bears, the Wii one, the one that came out for the Wii just like a year ago. Um, I play Amida Tellian, which is this really strange, sort of steampunky, alien, androgynous robot thing. Okay. I uh, can't remember. I've done a lot of um, stuff for the Nintendo DS. Like, oh, what the heck is it called? I don't know. Now, the biggest one that you would probably know is Cammy. And the rest are just kind of random, like, dating sim type Japanese uh, games whose names I cannot recall. Um, so I'm being told that I've got to go. Boo! I wish I could stay because this is so fun. But um, listen, uh, I have autographs today at four, at four o'clock, um, and I'm doing a game show. Mate, uh, mate, iwanai date thing, whatever. That's tonight, so come see that. Uh, tomorrow morning, this is the more important thing. Tomorrow's Easter, and uh, I don't know how many of you are visiting or maybe would like to have some sort of Easter kind of service. Uh, so there's, I think it's in room 108, and it's just a Sunday morning panel uh, with me. If you're, you know, away from home, away from your church, or just wanted to acknowledge what Easter's all about, come do that with me. It would be really awesome to see you there. And um, that's it. That's all.